Hey guys, it's Josh Brown. I'm here with a very special guest today. This is Jerry Ford. How, how can I describe him? Jerry is a fitness instructor, a trader. He's written a great book about his journey to major success that, that he's enjoying right now. Um, you're really gonna, I think you're really gonna love this. I'm so excited to talk to him today. Jerry, say hi to everyone. How's it going, man? I appreciate you having me on. All right, we're gonna be right back into it. Stick around. All right. So first of all, you're in LA. Yeah, I'm in. I'm in LA. Okay. How long have you been out there? I've been in LA for seven years. Okay. So you do, in my opinion, one of the most fun Instagram accounts. Um, and I know you're a trader, but then I know a really big part of your life is fitness. That's your career. And you've written this book that I think everyone should read. And it's called Guns, Drugs, or Wealth. And that book came out in 2018. And it's your true story, like the the, the story of you going from uh, Detroit to wealth and success and fame and everything that you had been working toward. Um, but And I think you're in a place now that when you were a kid, you couldn't even imagine existed. So you want to talk a little bit about um, what people can get out of that story and and some of the things that you've learned uh, in the process of living that life and, and getting to where you are today? Well, first thing, man, is uh, it's adversity, right? I think I think adversities create character. And I'm from Detroit. I mean, there's no way to sugarcoat it. I'm from the projects of Detroit. I'm from the ghetto. I mean, I've witnessed everything from uh, gun violence to gangs to drugs to even murders. Uh, I mean, I watched my best friend and my brother get murdered, unfortunately. So from that, it allowed me to put everything into my fitness, into the investment world. So even having that hunger, man, having that hunger has made me really go get it, has made me a really go getter. So, so you witnessed all this horrible stuff and, and, and lived through it, but that could have gone either way. Like yeah. it, it wasn't a foregone conclusion that you would become, I think you started with martial arts mm -hmm. and, and you competed at the Olympic level. Um, yeah. right. So, but that wasn't definitely the, the road that you could have gone down. Things could have gone in the opposite direction. Right before college when I was 18, I, uh, I was actually wrapped up in a lot of gang, gang activity in Detroit. And I remember I got arrested in Detroit and man, I was, I was honestly looking at 25 years. My uh, girlfriend at the time, her mom was a prosecuting attorney and she somehow got me out of it, man. But the thing is, is that coming from where I come from, you're either a wolf or a sheep. It's, it's no other way to put it. So you can either play the game and survive or you can either be a sheep and risk anything happening to you. I was going to say so, the, ga the gangs are not always optional. It's not always optional. Right. You know, it's like if you can't beat them, join them. And in order to survive in a place like I grew up in, you have to join them, right? And then uh, gangs, you know, gangs originated from Black Panther, you know, way back in the day. So even just having that support, that male support, it's kind of like, and, and I hate to say this because I, I was part of the fraternity in college, but it's kind of like a, a fraternity in, in, in some sort. But right. I needed that. I needed that support. I needed that protection. I also needed something to climb a ladder on. All of that made me really grind and go hard when I eventually moved to New York. I was going to say, so you, so you escaped and you, and you got into Rutgers yeah, and, got and school was like an eye opening experience for you from, from Man, what you it, were talking it, about. School Rutgers was the biggest experience of my life. I mean, I got to, I, I went from Detroit, uh, seeing gang violence and all of this stuff. And I got to Rutgers and it was predominantly white. Right. And I had no idea where to fit in. I mean, I loved women at the time before I was married. I loved women at the time. I couldn't get a girl to save my life right? Right. because my pants was baggy, right? Shirts were baggy. So when I got to Rutgers, it was such a cultural shock. And I remember calling my brother, who's, who's a rapper, and I remember calling him and saying, man, I can't, I can't do this. And he was right. like, all right, well, come home. I was like, I ain't coming home. <laughs> I'm going <gonna> figure... <laughs> to right. figure it out. So right. 
man, I, I had to, I had to really work hard, go to summer school to to really figure it out at Rutgers. How so? How how important were like athletics and physical fitness to you figuring that that out and finding a way to fit in? Like how big of so, how big of a role did that play? So so one because I've always did martial arts, I've always been into fitness, right? Yeah. But when I got to Rutgers, um, it's so funny to say this, but when I got to Rutgers, I noticed that like all the sports players, all the football players is getting the girls. So I said, okay, if I become shredded, I'll get the girls. <laughs> so I started working out. I started educating myself. Uh, one of my minors was in a fitness industry. So I really educated myself, man, got shredded. And then I fell in love with it because what I came from, and then later what I learned, what anybody comes from, whether you're from the ghetto or from corporate world, is that fitness is such a great outlet. So as I fell in love with fitness, I realized that this is what I wanted to do. So that right. turned into you know where I am now. Yeah. So let's so let's fast forward a little bit. So you um, you you get to L.A. You become a trainer at Equinox. You built up like a almost like a celebrity clientele. Um, so you, had, you were very in demand. And then what it started, happened? It started in New York. And I, I had built a really big brand for myself in New York. And I literally dropped all my clients from New York, moved to L.A. And then thanks to social media, people who wanted to train with me in L.A. was able to see that I was in L.A. Right. So I remember like Robin Thicke and this girl came and was like, oh, my God, Jerry works here. Because I specialized in training models and Miss Universes. And then and I had like my rappers and, and then right. corporate so I got to Equinox. I started training more celebrities, more high net worth individuals. Then I started training like the Prince of Saudi, uh, the Prince of Morocco. And it's crazy. From, it's wild. From, like, the Prince of Saudi became like my brother. He's still like my brother. He came to my wedding, talked yeah. to him all the time. But it just, it took me to a whole nother level. And you were super successful doing that. But mm -hmm. I think, I think, you know, you, you were saying like, you were looking for something more entrepreneurial and at the same time, you had started getting some mentorship from an investor who basically was like, look, if you want to make real money, this is how it's going to happen. This is how you invest. This is how you do get passive income. Uh, and I think that's really what the book leads the reader into is like, look where I came from and look what yeah. I've been able to build. And this is possible for you no matter where you're starting at. So yeah. talk a little bit about that mentorship. So I met, I met my mentor and our business partner. I met him in New York. I trained him in New York. And, you know, it's funny. When I first met this guy, I, I was 23 years old. And, and I was like your typical hot shot trainer in New York. You know, I came in, tight shirt, shirt tucked in, had the nice watch on. Couldn't tell me nothing. Right. So my PT manager came to me. He was like, man, I got this hot lead for you. This guy who wants to train five days a week. Blase, blase, blase. I said, all right, cool. So immediately I'm like, all right, I'm about to get this money. It's about to be more money. So I meet this guy and he is like your typical Wall Street jerk. Like this guy is like a jerk. <laughs> you know? I know I know a few of those. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, bro, he, he, he would say stuff like, tell me what we're doing the whole time for the workout and snap his fingers and say, go, you know, right, it was like, right. it was impossible. So after about six months of, of daydreaming about killing this man, every time I went to the session, uh, we started getting along and and I noticed how smart he was and how innovative and how amazing of an investor he was. So when I moved to LA, eventually I got fired from Equinox. And at that time, I was just like, you know what? I realized that security robs ambition, right? Or, yeah. or the illusion of security robs ambition. So I called him and I said, Bill, how did you make what you make? How, how did you make it? Yeah. And the next time you're in New York, I'll let you know. So I hopped on a red eye, no bags, no nothing. And I flew to New York from LA. And you're not, and you, you had just lost your job at this point. I lost my job the day before. I was like super sad because I'm like, oh, my clients are leaving me. Yeah. They did. So I flew to New York, man. And, uh, <laughs> and went to his, his ridiculous house and he opens the door and I'm like, bro, how did you do it? And he's like, chill bro like what's i said no i don't got time for jokes i ain't got time right. for game so he's you're like, not you're not living like he is at the time 
Exactly. Your own business. <laughs> Everything's great for him, you know? So so he's like, he's he's he always does these tests. He's like, what's the difference between an asset and a liability? I'm like, oh man, come on, bro. Asset, you know, put money in your pocket, liabilities don't, whatever. Right. So he gave me like a huge stack of books to read, bro. And before that, I had never read a book from cover to cover. So he was like, don't worry, bro. I don't read either. You could do audio books. So I started listening to two audio books a week. And every Sunday we would talk about those audio books. First thing was real estate. Right. I dug deep into real estate because he owns a, a ton of real estate. I dug deep into real estate. And then uh, I started a, a real estate company and ended up buying like four properties the first year and, and reinvested all the profits. And so then I was kind of teetering into the stock market, kind of, you know, doing whatever with the money that I had made. That's a good, that's a good word for it. Just like kind of teetering. Kind of, kind of playing around. I'm like, dude, what do you want? You know? Right. And I remember the first stock that I bought, <laughs> the first oil stock that I bought, this is like two years ago, was a stock called DNR. You know, it's an oil stock called DNR. Right. And we, um, we murdered it. It was, it was nuts. I mean, we, we were up like 500%. It was wow. Insane. And I say, you know what? I think I'm going to retire from training. So I retired from training completely. And all my clients was like pissed off. Only kept Big Sean, only because we're both from Detroit and we work out together and he's like my brother. For, for those who don't know, Big Sean's like one of the biggest rappers in, in, in the world right now, would you say? And he's, he's up there. Biggest rapper. Yeah. And so I started this company and, and, and I started a, a fund with my mentor. And actually Big Sean was the first investor. And then we started getting other rappers on, you know, because they don't, they had these business managers, man, that like rip them off, you yeah. know, rappers, sports players, whatever. So I started that and uh, my mentor and I, that's, that's where we are now. What's your favorite part about the markets? Because to me, like fitness and, and the markets are very far apart. Like, you know, if you eat right and you put in the hours and you put in the effort, you will get results in yeah. the world of fitness. You can't really say that the, there's so much randomness in the market that mm -hmm. it's very different, right? Yeah, it's very different. So my, my favorite part about the market besides something new, because I love the idea of conquering something new. Yeah. My favorite part about the market, and again, I'm really new to this, so I would not advise anybody to take my advice. But my favorite part about the market is the fact that as long as you do your homework and follow the news and follow the stories, especially like the transcripts and stuff, as long as you follow the story and dollar cost average, right. for the most part, you should be able to keep your head above water. Okay. So in other words, you might not, your first purchase of a stock that you like, you might not hit it right. Like you might end up buying too high or something changes and the stock comes down. But if you stick to your guns and you have the buying power to add at lower prices, you, you're not going to wipe yourself out. So for every security that I buy, I allow for four buys. Okay. Always buy one fourth. And, and again, this may change the more experience I get, but I always buy one fourth of a position. And then every, is, again, as long as the story is, is good, and as long as the news is good, and as long as they're hitting the earning matrix, I add every 10% down, which served me really well in March. Now tell me something. The, la the last quarter of the position that you buy is going to be the hardest one. It's the hardest one. Because you're, you're already down 30, 40% <laughs> like of money. <laughs> I, know. I know. But um, you know what? You know what bro? So I am happy that I have the discipline for martial arts to pull the trigger. And, and look, I, I, I tell my business partner all the time, I said, look, I, I'm not a billionaire, right? But I will sell all the watches that I got. <laughs> yeah. Well, so let's talk about that word billionaire because it's a word that you repeat a lot in, in the book. And it seems like being on that track is really important to you. Is that like metaphorically speaking or is that really something that you want for your life? You want to actually hit the B. Um, so I know a lot of people want to be wealthy, but they don't necessarily want to take it that far. You no, seem like you do. You do. I'm okay. I'm taking it that far. Are you going to remember it, me though when you when you board. got there? <laughs> I got it on my vision board. I, I, right. I made Big Sean put it on his vision board. <laughs> All right. So I, I, I definitely, I definitely want to get there.
Okay, so you so in you you talk about having this three pronged approach to success. I think you're saying passive passive income coming from real estate, more active income coming from from what you do for a living, whether it's fitness training or now investing, and then the third bucket is like the money you don't spend on things that you don't really need. Are, th- are those the three? Do I have that right? That's it. That's it. How'd, so you, it's- how'd you come up with that? So the first book that I read was Rich Dad Poor Dad. Okay. It's the very it's a classic first book that, I, that I listened to actually. Right. Rich Dad Poor Dad. And the thing I like best about Rich Dad Poor Dad, man, was that he had three very specific uh, points to income. And it was passive real estate. And then I don't remember the other two, but that's kind of where I got the layout from. Okay. You know, as a trainer and as a person that was consistently around celebrities who were going broke. I mean, because in LA, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. Like the houses that are over, I think it was something like the houses that are over $5 million are occupied at most for five years. And then they lose them because a lot of celebrities here, you know, live beyond their means. So I was like, okay, how can I? Yeah, you can't, and you can't tell from the outside looking in, it looks amazing. You can't That's tell right. who's barely hanging on. That's right. That's right. So I was like, okay, if they had passive, from real estate, um, stocks, and then right. if they just spent their money a little bit better, I think that can help them and help me. And that's where I got that's where I got those three pillars. Okay, so you so you're training a lot of celebrities, but you know the real st- you know what's really going on with that. Hopefully, they didn't bounce a check on you. No, I would I would beat them down. <laughs> right. So, what do you want to accomplish um, with with trading and and um, the the fund like? What will be the signifier to you that you've actually experienced success in that arena specifically? Is it a number of dollars under management or the size of a staff that you have or a reputation? Like what, what would make you say, I did it on, on the street. I, I accomplished it. Right now, I, so my wife also works for, my wife, my wife is a, a partner at AQR. I know, uh, I know Cliff, shout to Cliff. Or yeah, Cliff and Kabiller. Yep. And- yeah. So right now, smart people, my, very smart people. Yeah. I, I spend a lot of time with them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so so uh, what I really want to do now, my first milestone is to have a billion dollars under management. Okay. So when you, when you, when you get there, you know, what you'll end up saying to yourself is like, well, if I can do this, what, like, there's no reason I can't be at 2 billion. Like that's right. what's now you, you may decide you don't want to, um, it depends on the structure of, of your company and how much mm-hmm. personal attention you're giving investors versus how much you're able to scale it. And yeah. one of the things you were saying about training that you realized when you were at Equinox, you were saying, if I, if I train 16 people a day, you know, 30 minute sessions in an eight hour day, I'll never, I'll never get wealthy because that doesn't scale. You're trading your time for dollars in a very finite way. Wealth management or, or financial service is very different. It's about mm-hmm. scale. So that I'm sure that's something that you've thought a lot about, right? Yeah, for sure. And actually, I was training 17 hours a day. No. Yeah. I, I would literally get to either HRC in New York or Equinox. I would get there oh my God. 5 a.m. and I would stay until 10 p.m. How did you physically handle that? Forget about mentally. So you, you know what's crazy, man, is I loved it so much. And then yeah. I loved the people that I worked with so much that I, just, I felt like I was in the spotlight. It was, it was, it was a high that I got. Even okay. when I got to Equinox uh, and I was training like 16, seven people a day, because I was top two in the company worldwide, they would let me eat on the floor. You know, They would let me work out with my clients. And I, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. And then right. I realized that I can't get wealthy by working for any company, whether it's fitness or corporate. Right, because there's a ceiling on your time. Unless you're going to start doing, you know, possession with five people at once, that really, like, it doesn't scale. So, um, you know, yeah, funny is I actually, I, then I raised my prices, right? I, I, I met with the head of Equinox. I said, listen, I'm going to start charging people three sessions for one session. So as right. long as they're okay with it, I'm going to start doing it. So I did that. And so then Free I was market. Doing, if they want it, they want it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I did that and it was still, I mean, it, some days it would murder me. I was, yeah crazy it's like literally 16 17 hour days 
Right. Okay. So you have a very different lifestyle now, but uh, markets open in New York at 930. We like to say we joke around in on Wall Street like at, by 6 a.m. The day's over. Basically, yeah. like all the news that matters is, is out. So, so that's like a very different lifestyle now being on the West Coast. Uh, I don't know what kind of hours you keep, but I can tell from social media, you still find tons of time to work out. Look like yeah. It looks like you're, you're still killing it in the gym. So how do you find a balance between like running money, trading, investing, keeping up with all the news and then doing what you, you've always done on the fitness side? Is that hard to do? Actually, no, because working out, working out is like second nature, right? So okay. wake up at 6 a.m. Um, I do my morning regimen and then market open at 630. I'm at my Bloomberg terminal right behind me and I do my thing. And then at 1 p.m. I'm out. I head to Sean's crib or he comes to my house or we go to but go fitness. We work out. And then if anything is important, I got the terminal on my phone with the app. I got the seeking alpha financial times barons all of that stuff on the phone yeah and for that hour that we're working out i don't want to hear nothing about trading nothing about the market it's that's our time to go hard and enjoy. yeah got to create separation gotcha. you know whatever exercise i do get it's usually on a bicycle um uh, yeah. and or i'm walking yeah, yeah, and yeah. i have a podcast about the stock market in my ears it's probably not great like I, I gotta figure out a way to, I gotta figure out a way to, to do something else. Maybe I'll, I'll, maybe I'll listen to some Big Sean. Um, we, we want people to buy your book. I'm gonna link to, uh, I'm gonna link to um, guns, drugs, or wealth uh, at Amazon. P you guys should read this. It's, it's 160 something pages. I'm breezing right through it. I think it's great. Um, I love the way you put it together and, and the writing style. So everybody, go ahead and buy uh, Jerry's book. Where do you want people to follow you? IG. They can follow me on IG at uh, right. Real Jerry Ford. You're at Real Jerry Ford on, on Instagram? All right. Yep. Let us know what your thoughts are. Uh, fitness, finance, the difference between passive income and investment income. We want to hear what you guys think. Go ahead and follow the channel. Subscribe if you have not already. We love your likes. They mean a lot to me. They help me get to sleep at night. So if you like this video, go ahead and smash that. We will be back with you very, very soon. Shout out to Jerry. Thank you so much, man. Uh, Appreciate it. Man. All right. We'll talk to you guys soon.